All right. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar hosted by the Center for Advanced Transportation Mobility. I am Dr. Miranda McBride, the director of the Center for Advanced Transportation Mobility, also called CADM as well. For those who are not very familiar with our center, CADM is a tier one university transportation center founded, funded, excuse me, by the US Department of Transportation under the FAST Act. The center was established in 2017, and the consortium is led by North Carolina A&T State University and also includes Virginia Tech and, of course, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. The research funded through CADM primarily falls under the Improving Mobility for People and Goods uh, Research Priority Area, and we focus on vulnerable road users as well as emergency situations that are related to transportation. Today's webinar relates to the, a topic that has been in the news quite a bit, over the last year. Uh, the title of the presentation, as you can see here, is Mask Wearing Intention in the Aircraft Cabin During COVID-19. So I'm sure several of you have seen uh, some of the news uh, casts that have described some of the violence that has gone on over controversies related to people wearing masks or particularly not wanting to wear their masks. So this is really a timely presentation here. Uh, Dr. Jing Yu Pan will be presenting her current research on this topic. Dr. Pan is an assistant professor in the School of Graduate Studies at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Her professional background includes airline and airport management, as she worked many years for Lufthansa, German Airlines and International Air Transport Association, or IATA. Her responsibilities at IATA training center as a training manager and program coordinator included substantial research of airlines and airports with respect to their operations and training needs. Dr. Pan is currently teaching courses in the areas of research methodology and transportation systems at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. She has expertise in advanced multivariate statistics and modeling techniques, especially structural equation modeling. Dr. Pan maintains an active research agenda, and her research interest is in transportation, focusing on market competition and passenger behavior. Dr. Pan, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. McBride, for your introduction. Okay, I'll just go ahead with uh, the presentation, if everyone can hear me well. Okay, so I will just go ahead. So good afternoon, my name is Jean Pan. I'm the assistant professor of uh, the School of Graduate Studies, College of Aviation at Embarado Aeronautical University. Today I'm here to present my research, the research study I co-authored with uh, Dr. Liu, uh, Da Hai Liu, he is a professor in the same department with me. The title of our research is Mask Wearing Intention in Aircraft Cabin During COVID-19. So in this presentation, I will start by giving some brief background introduction of the research and look into the literature, especially focusing on mask wearing in COVID-19. Uh, then I'll move ahead with uh, talking about the research methods for this study, and then I'll present selected analytical results from um, the data analysis, followed by discussions, conclusions, contributions, and the limitations of the study. The presentation is about one hour. Okay. All right, now, now we are over one and a half year into the pandemic. We already know a lot. We have learned a lot about this disease. The World Health Organization described COVID-19 as an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus, something very new to us. But we know now that COVID-19 virus spreads mainly through respiratory droplets from infected persons, especially when people get very close to one another within two meters, within this range, the infection is uh, very much likely to happen. The virus is highly contagious, we all know that, far beyond anyone can imagine. Statistics show that COVID-19 continues to spread in the US and around the world. So uh, here we have the numbers. So by May 2021, uh, there were about 170 million accumulated cases and 35 million deaths caused by COVID-19 around the world. It's really sad to see those numbers and to think about what a virus can do, such a great damage uh, to, to the world, to human society. So to fight COVID-19, measures have been taken. 
uh, at the national level, regional level, community levels as well. At the macro level, so we are seeing border closure, economic lockdown. At the micro level, we see protective measures have been taken, implemented. Uh, that includes hygiene measures, social distancing, and mask wearing. So the, the last one, mask wearing, is the focus of our research, is also the focus of today's presentation. Okay, so we say not only people's lives have been fundamentally disrupted by COVID-19, or businesses have suffered tremendously from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic as well. But we say among all the businesses, air transportation has been hit particularly hard um, by COVID-19. I wouldn't spend time detailing the tremendous loss of the industry over the past two years. We all know that's really brutal from both uh, the demand and the supply perspectives. We say part of the reasons why air transportation has been particularly vulnerable to the impact of COVID-19 is probably related to the nature of the business, where we see large amounts of people gathering for air transportation, so which makes COVID-19 transmission more likely to happen. One of such gatherings uh, during, air tra uh, during air transportation take place in the aircraft cabin, okay, which is an enclosed environment where passengers sitting next to one another for a prolonged period of time. So on the right-hand side, we have a illustration of an aircraft cabin. Well, to be fair to airlines, the air we breathe in the aircraft cabin is actually better than some of the supermarkets, cafeterias on the ground. This is so because airlines make use of a efficient air circulation system and a, sorry, and a powerful filters. So uh, we say HEPA filters to clean the air in the cabin. Okay, so, but the problem with uh, you sitting, we sitting in the aircraft cabin is that you never know who is sitting next to you and the status of that person. If that person happens to be contagious and he or she is sitting next shoulder to shoulder with you for hours, the risks of you getting infection is still pretty high. To make the matter more complicated, we now know that 50% of the transmission of COVID-19 occur from asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic infected people who are unaware of their infectiousness to others. Besides, not all commercial aircraft are equipped with uh, the powerful filter system. In the US, for example, nearly 15% of the large commercial airline aircraft and 50% of uh, smaller regional commercial aircraft, they do not have this equipment of uh, so-called HEPA filter. So all these factors adding together can increase the risks of uh, one getting infected by COVID-19 when he or she is sitting in the aircraft cabin. Okay, so we understand now when passengers are being put in such an environment, well, we will see, you know, many protective measures we are familiar with, they just, they do not apply. They simply do not apply. For example, we cannot socially distance ourselves in an aircraft cabin. This is just not something that's going to happen due to the nature of the business. That pretty much leaves us only very limited tools to protect ourselves from the virus during flight, with mask wearing being the most important one. It is so because Masks create a physical barrier between people, making it harder for the virus to spread. While it sounds very easy to understand, mask wearing has been a complicated issue, has been a sensitive issue from the very beginning of the pandemic, and it continues to be a topic for strong debate, especially in the US. Uh, but airlines are determined. So we see airlines domestically, Internationally, they make masks mandatory on all of their flights. Um, and as we, we, we learned, um, at least in the US, uh, the mask mandate policy has been recently uh, being said, being uh, extended to next year. Okay, so it's not only on air transportation, it's all for all transportation modes. Okay, so we see this continuing of using this, um, uh, ma uh, this mask mandate policy. Okay, so this is just to give you a little bit of background of the study. So now let's take a look at the literature. What does the literature say about this issue? So it is interesting that while infectious disease has been a research interest for a long time, for decades, earlier studies in this area almost never 
focused on face masks as a protective measure. Instead, they tended to focus on other measures, such as hygiene measures, social distancing, educational program, et cetera, to protect the general public from infectious disease. However, since the starting of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a surge, a dramatic increase in the research of mask use. But these studies tended to focus more on the effectiveness of masks. So we have a, a lot of experiments being done to test which type of mask is actually more effective. Okay? Uh, we also have studies done at the macro level to compare mask use across countries, especially from different cultural backgrounds. We also have studies being done looking into mask policies and related issues. Only very limited studies examine mask use in transportation, and even fewer studies did so in air transportation, which is actually surprising, given that transportation, especially air transportation, can be such a likely vehicle for rapid spreading of the virus of COVID-19. Also, in addition to small amount, these studies usually describe the mask use at a very general level. So for example, we have this uh, Busy and Day in 2020. So they conducted a observational study focusing on public transportation regarding mask use. They found that complete mask compliance was only 12%, while 98% of people complied with social distancing guidelines. In another study, which is more related to air transportation, we have this uh, Soto Moya Castello et al. 2021, that's a more recent study. They reported that passengers were less likely to wear a mask, even if it was provided by their preferred airlines, while majority of them actively followed other protective measures such as hand washing, social distancing, et cetera. While these studies are useful, so they are here to provide some useful insights in mask reluctancy, in, uh, in mask use, in the transport contact, very few of them. So as a matter of fact, from what we see, none of them actually examined in a deeper sense of the issue to explore the issue of mask use from the lens of airline passengers to ask the why questions. In other words, to identify factors that influence mask wearing intention of airline passengers when they are sitting in the aircraft cabin. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, going through the literature. There are tons of them, but I do want to point out the research gap. There is clearly a research gap in the understanding of mask wearing from passengers' perspective in air travel during COVID-19, especially in the aircraft cabin environment. So we say it is likely that factors driving the intention to wear a mask when flying during COVID-19 is uniquely shaped by such a contact, which is a passenger sitting together in a small confined space for a long time. To the best of our knowledge, uh, no previous studies have been done to examine air travelers' intention to wear a mask in aircraft cabin during pandemics. Uh, of course, if they have a choice, okay? As far as we see it, such knowledge is important, is essential, especially in the US where air travel is the major mode for trips. So more Americans are sitting in aircraft cabin every year compared to people from all over the world, any, any other you know, countries. Yet mask wearing uh, during uh, COVID-19 on the ground in the air has been such a, con a con controversial, such a sensitive topic. Uh, for, for a strong debate. So as far as we see it, it's worth investigating. So this study aims to increase the understanding in this area to examine mask use from the lens of passengers to take a look at what factors would influence the intention when they fly during COVID-19 and when they are sitting in the aircraft cabin. Okay. All right. So specifically, this study seeks to an answer the following research questions. Okay. So first one, one is that we look for we take a look at factor impact. We want to look at uh, what are the key factors, what are the key determinants of passengers' intention to wear a mask on board an airplane during COVID-19. So first of all, we want to develop a broad understanding of factor impact in this specific study contact. And the second question is about group comparison. So still we are looking at factor impact. But now the focus is on, we compare that in terms of uh, groups. So in this study, the group is defined by the variable of age. So we actually wanted to take a look at how these factors, important factors, would impact the different age groups in different ways. Okay? And the third research question 
is that if given a choice, are passengers willing to pay extra to switch to an airline that adopts a different mask policy? And what demographic and travel related factors can be used to predict willingness to pay a large amount versus small amount to make the switch? Okay, so these are the three research questions that we use to guide our design, our data collection, data analysis. So we follow, we follow them. Okay, all right. To answer these questions, this study developed a uh, extended theory of planned behavior model. So it's based on the theory of planned behavior um, in, uh, or the TPB. In addition to the three original factors, the so attitude, subject norm, perceived behavior control, we added six additional factors, external factors to the model. Okay, so they include descriptive norms, comfort, risk avoidance, individualism, information seeking, information avoidance. Some of them I'll explain a little more when we interpret uh, the results. Okay, don't worry about that. So now we are looking at in this model nine factors. So they are being seen, being treated as nine independent variables. So the analysis is to look at how these nine IVs, independent variables, would impact on the dependent variable, which in this case is the behavior intention to wear a mask uh, when people sit in aircraft cabin during COVID-19. Okay. All right, so um, there are actually uh, models and theories in the literature that can be potentially used for uh, this research. Uh, the decision to choose the theory of planned behavior model as the fundamental uh, theory, uh, theoretical framework for this study, um, you know, we have several reasons for, for, for doing that. First, the theory of planned behavior uh, is a well-established behavior uh, 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 behavior theory. It provides a well-established behavior model, which has been successfully applied to various domains, including air transportation, to predict the behaviors and intentions. Okay, it's because it's a wi widely used, widely accepted, and also a couple of uh, uh, studies about mask use uh, in other domains, in other set, in other settings. Uh, they made use of uh, the TPP as well, so it makes sense that we continue to make use of that and see if we can uh, verify the theory, expound the theory to a, a different study context. Okay. Uh, the second reason is that at its core, okay, the theory of plant behavior says that the intention and the behavior of people are formed logically and they are influenced by some important factors specific to the context in which the intention and behavior take place. So this is in agreement with uh, the basic idea of this study. So in this study, we see, we, we view mask wearing as a decision-making process in which um, the intention of wearing mask is triggered, is affected by some important factors. So because of this uh, agreement in fundamentally how we see intention and behavior, how, how it takes place, so it is suitable that we choose the TPP as a fundamental theory for this study. And finally, uh, the theory allows the researcher to add additional factors, external factors to the model to further increase the predictive power of the model. So this flexibility is really what we are looking for uh, because what we wanted to do is we want to develop a theoretical framework that would contain not only original the, or, uh, the original factors, but also factors that are related to the study context to develop a holistic understanding of the intention to wear a mask when people are flying uh, in COVID-19, okay? So this is why we choose uh, the TPP, okay? To develop a model like this. All right, so moving on to research methods, okay? So this study used the survey design, okay? Used the survey design. It used a, uh, um, uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk, or in short, they call them M Turk. Um, uh, it is an online platform, so we use that to collect data for uh, this study. So M Turk is a co convenience uh, sampling strategy. Okay, well, because uh, we are still pretty much in COVID nineteen, not really out of the wood yet. Um, so it is probably the only feasible way that we can use to collect data uh, in a short period of time. Well, M Turk is suitable for this study, not only because it allows us to assess a large amount of people 
in a short period of time. But also because this study uh, does not really require specific population. So uh, the eligibility for anyone to participate in our survey would be you're 80 years older, you have to have experience travel by air over the past three years, you have to have basic knowledge and ability to wear a mask to handle mask related issues. So it's really, really needs uh, everyone uh, 18 years or older. So in this case, MTurk is a, uh, is a suitable method because it can spread out the information to reach as many people as possible. So again, we do not require you have specific expertise or knowledge in order to participate in the uh, research. Okay, so that is why MTurk is a good method to use. So we say, MTurk, uh, as we know, is a convenient sampling method. It has its limitation, right? Uh, but uh, we also say MTurk is able to produce the sample that can be more representative of the national population than other convenient sampling methods. For example, if you use student sampling, if you use other online sampling. So there is actually literature support um, for uh, the use of MTurk. So MTurk has been the most widely used online uh, data collection tool for academic research over the past 10 years. So if convenient sampling has to be used online, sampling has to be used, MTurk is actually a good choice, okay? So uh, in terms of a um, survey instrument, so we developed a survey questionnaire for data collection. There are four sections in the questionnaire. The first and the second one, uh, they are about uh, collecting data about passenger demographics, travel experience. Uh, the third section is the major section in which participants were asked to uh, evaluate the nine factors. So if you recall uh, in my model, uh, and how these factors would affect their intention to wear a mask or not if they fly during COVID-19 based on a five-point light year scale. Uh, because what we are measuring in the model, they are constructs. So we use multi-item scale for the measurement. Many scales, many scale items were adopted, were based on uh, what is uh, what is being uh, validated in the literature. So we do so to increase the validity in measurement. Also for each construct, we use at least three items to measure. So again, we do so to increase the validity in measurement. Also, it allows to have a more comprehensive, more complete measurement of each construct in the model. Okay, all right, so the last section in the questionnaire, section four, uh, is a scenario-based uh, small survey. So participants would read a scenario in which they will be given a choice of paying extra to switch to an airline that adopts a different mask policy. So I have some details to uh, talk about later on okay, when I come to, um, to explain more about this, um, about this uh, analysis, okay? All right, so uh, data collection. Data collection took place in May 2021. So specifically, it's between 12th and 15th of May 2021. So the time for the survey was actually intentionally planned and selected to allow us to best capture air travelers' opinion on mask wearing when they fly uh, in the US. By May 2021, over 60 of adults or the adults in the U.S. received at least one dose of vaccination. So the country at that time started to see falling COVID cases across the country. Well, it was uh, from that time on, CDC started to allow fully vaccinated people to re resume activities without wearing a mask, uh, outdoor, sometimes indoor. Uh, and also that vaccination continued to rot. So at that point of time, okay, at the time of data collection, it is reasonable actually to predict that COVID-19 restrictions will be gradually relaxed, will gradually removed across the country. And that could also include the mask mandate uh, on airplanes, right? Uh, in the meantime, however, COVID-19 continued to evolve, to mutate, to spread, which means that there could still be uncertainties about the risk of COVID-19. So if we put ourselves at this time, we know more, but if we put ourselves back in May, when we collect the data, we can actually, starting from that time uh, point, point of time, we could see May and June of 2021 as the transitional period where people started to see the policy change regarding masks, of course, depending on the development of COVID-19. And when they started to see 
the re relaxation of uh, COVID-19 restrictions slowly, gradually remove uh, those restrictions, people may start to see mask wearing will eventually become a personal choice, right? And in other words, they will sooner or later need to decide for themselves if they want to wear a mask or not, okay? Well, many people in this case may still prefer to wear a mask uh, during this transitional period or even beyond, uh, especially when we talk about in crowded settings, uh, even masks are not mandated, okay? Especially in aircraft cabin where social distancing is not possible. So surveying people at this time in May, well, from what we see it is suitable. Uh, because when people started to see this transition of, uh, from mass mandated to slowly graduate, relax uh, the restriction, and, and they, they started to think about their mask decision when masks uh, eventually become a personal choice, they can better understand the, the survey contact, uh, what we want to know from them, okay, because they start to see this and start to think about this, and they are in, well, they, they will be able to provide more accurate information to help us understand their intention to wear a mask during flight where, when we are still dealing with COVID-19. So the focus of this study is not really to ask people, are you intent to wear a mask? When mask is by law, you have to wear it. So in this case, if you have to wear it, no matter what, then in this case, your intention to wear or not wear a mask would, would not really important, right? Because you have to wear anyway. So this is not really our focus. Our focus is on maybe moving forward. So mask will eventually be a, a, a personal choice. And by that time, if that's a free will, you, you can choose to wear or not wear, then your intention will matter. Okay? And this is what we are looking at, at that time, at that scenario. So if you are uh, willing to or intend to wear a mask or not. Uh, as a matter of fact, we make it very clear in our survey questionnaire. We are saying that, okay, in the next three months, let's say you're, you're, you're doing a flight with an airline and ma mask is not mandatory, it's not required. So in this case, are you saying, do you think you intend to wear a mask or not? So again, in May, because they see this transition, so they understand mask will eventually be a personal choice. So they are better, they can better understand what we are looking for, understand our study contact. Okay, so that's why we say that the time for data collection uh, was actually planned, selected, okay, to best suit the purpose of our study. So final sample size is um, um, 1,121, so that's uh, after data cleaning. And we conducted three analyses. So these three analyses corresponds to the three questions I just presented to you. The first one is all sample, okay? That's everyone, okay, everyone, uh, which means that we want to see the impact of the nine factors on everyone in this sample, their intention to wear a mask or not, okay, in this specific study contact. And the second analysis is group comparison. So here, we're still looking at the same model, okay, but we focus on age group, age group comparison. So all example is 1,121 people were broken down into three age groups. So we have young age group, middle age group, and a senior age group. Uh, still, we look at, we will look at the nine factors, but the focus will, will see how these factors will impact on these three groups in different ways. So the first and the second analysis, uh, they were being done, but being performed by a structural, a structural equation modeling approach based on the extended theory of planned behavior uh, that I just uh, show, showed you. The third analysis is a little bit different because we wanted to uh, provide another lens, uh, another perspective to look at mask wearing in airplanes. Well, in this case, respondents were giving uh, a scenario, okay, to indicate if they're willing to pay extra to switch from a mask mandated airline to a non-mask mandated airline and vice versa. So in other words, are they willing to pay to wear a mask or are they willing to pay extra to not wear a mask when flying, when flying during COVID-19? Okay, so for responders who indicated their willingness to pay to switch to airlines, uh, we performed a logistic regression analysis to identify what demographic and travel related factors can be used to predict their willingness to pay a large amount versus small amount to make the switch. Okay. All right. So uh, now let's move on to, oh, okay. Data analysis. Okay. Uh, 
So take a look at some of the results here. So first of all, data analysis was done uh, using AMOS version 27, STSS version 27. Due to the space and time constraints, I would uh, only present some selected results here. So first of all, let's take a look at the all sample results. That's everyone. Uh, so for this analysis, I, we use a two-phased uh, structured equation modeling approach. Okay, so which means that we need to uh, to measure uh, to to estimate the measurement model, to estimate the structure model. Okay, so uh, here we have some uh, tables to look at. Of course, of course, before reaching the tables, we will need to first of all take care of the model fit issue. So we went through several rounds of model fit to eventually reach the model fit. So the criteria for evaluate the model fit uh, was based on the method of assessment uh, in Bern 2020. So this paper table here, uh, this is uh, uh, to show uh, the, uh, the val uh, validation of the measurement model. So in order to valid, validate the measurement model, we need to take a look at the reliability and the validity of the model. For the reliability part, we look at Cronbach alpha, okay, and CR, composite reliability, which is a little bit more accurate than Cronbach Kron Kron alpha. So the principle is that we want the values for both to be greater than 0 0.7, okay, which is achieved here. Uh, for validity, we took that, we took a take a look at two validities, so a conversion validity and discriminant validity. So conversion validity was established by uh, looking at several things. For example, we can look at factor loadings here. So we want those numbers to be greater or close to 0 0.7. We are pretty much good, uh, except for this one is 0 0.681. That's the N4 to measure the uh, description norms. Because it's very close to 0 0.7, so the decision was uh, not to keep that in the model to avoid losing information. A more important indicator for establishment of conversion validity is AVE, which is uh, the average variance extracted. So this, for this, the values for all the models need to be greater than 0 0.5, uh, which is uh, uh, achieved here. Okay, uh, the smaller table here, uh, this is uh, for us to evaluate and assess discriminant validity. So mainly we need to compare the square root of AVE uh, of, a, of a particular construct with the correlation between that construct and all the construct in the model, okay? So the principle is that we want this AVE, the square root of this AVE greater, higher than the correlation. So it is achieved here, as you can see. In terms of uh, the structure model assessment, so it's, it's this table, okay? Uh, there are a couple of things to look at, but the most important thing is that we look at hypothesis testing. So if you recall that we have nine factors in the model, so correspondingly, we have uh, nine passes that need to be tested. So here we show the results, okay? We have five passes out of nine turn out to be significant, statistically significant. But one of the five, okay, which is uh, the, this one, structure, uh, is a, uh, uh, Sub, uh, subjective norms, uh, how that influence behavior intention. So this one, also significant, it does not really follow the hypothesis direction. So we have to move it out of the, you know, the list. So this uh, left us with the four factors in this four sample analysis that turn out to be significant in the attention to wear a mask when people fly in COVID-19. They are attitude, okay, descriptive norm, risk avoidance, and information seeking. So these four factors out of the nine, so they are significant or important determinants of the intention to wear a mask uh, when people are sitting, are sitting in uh, aircraft cabin flying during COVID-19, okay? So just to uh, uh, give you, uh, you know, some uh, brief in, uh, interpretation, okay? So try to interpret it uh, against the study background, okay? So we say uh, the finding shows that attitude is a important factor, a significant factor, okay? So the interpretation will be the more favorable feeling air travelers have toward the mask use, the more likely that they would intend to wear a mask okay, when flying during COVID-19 when they sit in aircraft cabin, okay? So it's really about you like it or not, okay? You like it, and then you tend to wear. If you do not like it, then your intention to wear will be low. So it's, it's all about your attitude. Okay, we also assessed two norms in this study, subject norm and descriptive norm. So subjective norms uh, refers to uh, expectations from important others of an individual for that individual to wear a mask. So for example, my family would say to me, 
you need to wear a mask when flying. Okay, it is important that you wear a mask when flying. We expect you to wear a mask when flying. So this is a the influence, the, the pressure we we I, I received from my important others. So this is what we call uh, subjective norms. Uh, we also uh, uh, studied or tested descriptive norms. So descriptive norms refers to if others actually wear a mask and how this um, concrete action would impact on your intention to wear a mask yourselves. So in this case, the example will be, I see my friends wearing a mask when they are sitting in the aircraft cabin. So how seeing this important actions of others would impact on my uh, intention to wear a mask. Okay, so there's a difference between uh, subject norm and descriptive norm. Uh, in this study, only, only descriptive norms are important. Okay, subject norms turn out not to be an important factor. So this may indicate that when it comes to mask wearing during flight, people tend to follow actions than words. Okay, so they are more likely to follow a health recommendation if they see others are doing it. Resident others are saying something, but when, when others are actually doing it by themselves, so this is uh, really motivating the individual to uh, to have more intention to wear a mask himself or herself. Okay, so this is probably what we say the power of the role modeling. Okay, all right, risk of uh, risk avoidance is another one. Risk avoidance is another significant factor in this study. So this really shows that air travelers are aware of the, the risks associated with COVID-19. They carefully assess the risks of uh, in-flight uh, infection, and they intend to rely on masks to mitigate, to avoid the risk. So this is actually quite common sense because we are talking about, in this study, we're talking about some uh, you know, global pandemic, right? Deadly uh, uh, disease. So uh, avoiding the risk is a nat natural tendency of people. So it's actually not really surprising we have this, uh, 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 this results. We also assess the two information fact factors. Information uh, uh, seeking and information avoidance. Only information seeking turned out to be significant. Information avoidance was not a significant factor in this analysis. So information avoidance, uh, as the name may imply, would refer to people. So in this study, uh, in this study, contact will be airline passengers. Uh, they avoid interaction with unwanted information. Okay, but by doing so, you know, they may reduce the chance of receiving important information. Right. So the findings may, you know, seems to indicate that um, mask wearing intention would not be affected when one avoids getting information about COVID nineteen, about mask use, etc. Right, because uh, you know, when you do not know things, when you are not informed, well, your intention will not not change because uh, you know you 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 avoid getting the information. So that wouldn't really influence your intention to wear or not wear a mask. Information ser searching or seeking, on the other hand, is a, is an active searching for information on COVID nineteen on mask use. So it would allow air travelers to stay updated. Um, in terms of the latest development of COVID-19 of mass use. So when they become more informed, so this re receiving or seeking information would more likely to influence their intention to wear a mask. Okay, so this is actually make good sense. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, okay, attitude. Attitude has the strongest effect followed by risk avoidance. So, um, so, uh, so in, in this uh, uh, example analysis, we have nine factors, right? A lot of factors. But attitude toward masks turn out to be the strongest uh, determinants of the intention to wear masks. It's really about uh, you, you, you are in favor of masks or you're not in favor of masks. Even we're talking about we are sitting in the aircraft cabin, which we have potential higher risk of, the, of getting infected. But still, according to this analysis, attitude toward masks, that really, really matters the most. Okay, So um, this may be related to uh, the mixed views uh, the opposing views of masks in the U.S. Okay, because this kind of, in this country we do not have previous history of face covering, so people may have different opinions of wearing or not wearing a mask. Okay, so again, given that mask wearing is such a sensitive, controversial topic, it is actually not surprising. Uh, attitude itself, attitude alone, can play a decisive role in you really wearing a mask or not when you fly during COVID-19, okay? Followed by risk avoidance. So risk avoidance is the second important factor. So this really shows 
uh, the risk avoidance of uh, the the, ri uh, the risk of uh, awareness of COVID-19 among general public. So, uh, so from, from the, fi the findings, we can see uh, there's recognition, re uh, recognition here that COVID-19 risk is real, is significant. So not surprisingly, uh, people make uh, risk avoidance as an important consideration when they decide on if they want to wear a mask or not during COVID-19. So this is actually quite a common sense, okay? So we also have several factors that turn out not significant, to be not significant in this, uh, uh, in this analysis. So I just uh, uh, pick up two to give a brief introduction, a uh, brief uh, interpretation. Uh, comfortability. So comfort in wearing a mask turned out to be not a significant factor in the intention to wear masks during flight uh, during COVID-19. Well, which is a kind of a surprising because uh, from common sense, we probably think uh, being comfortable or not comfortable when wearing a mask, that could be a driver in, you know, me wanting or intending to wear a mask or not. But, you know, the findings indicate otherwise. Well, although the finding here may seem to be counterintuitive, uh, it, it actually makes sense when we, we interpret that in, in the specific uh, study contact of a travel during COVID-19. So simply speaking, air travelers may perceive higher risks of contracting the virus in the enclosed cabin environment where social distancing is not possible. Therefore, they may not consider comfort as a priority, okay, when deciding on ma mask wearing or not on board an airplane. So similar findings uh, were actually made uh, in, you know, in the, in the literature among other studies of COVID-19. So for example, there was a study of COVID-19 uh, in, in Singapore, okay? So uh, that study reported that mask compliance was achieved despite significant discomfort associated with mask wearing. Okay, so when we put everything in the context of aircraft cabin, it is easy to see that some other factors, especially the risk factors of COVID-19 may overtake comfort as a more significant important contributor to mask wearing intention. In other words, in an aircraft cabin where the risks of uh, getting infection is potentially high, people may intend to sacrifice comfort in exchange for safety. So uh, this is actually uh, can be explained well in the study context. Another uh, factor that turned out to be not significant is uh, perceived behavior control, okay, or PBC. So uh, in this study, PBC refers to the perceived control control on mask mask acquisition uh, or knowledge or ability to wear a mask or to handle a mask. Okay, the insignificant of this factor may be related to the timing, okay, of conducting this study. So data collection took place one and a half year into the pandemic. Well, at the beginning, we had short supply uh, of masks. People lack the knowledge of masks. But one and a half year into the pandemic, uh, we have a sufficient supply of masks. And we have sufficient knowledge of masks because we are talking about that almost every day. So the findings may indicate that uh, Americans are, can, can easily obtain ma masks, okay, at the time of uh, we, we do this study, and they are confident in their knowledge, their ability to properly handle mask-related issues. Okay, so consequently, they may not perceive a control-related factor to be important in their intention to wear a mask, okay? So for the sake of time, I'll just to stop here uh, for this uh, analysis and move forward to age group comparison, okay? So here we have a uh, the second analysis, age group comparison. Uh, we want to compare three age groups. So the three age groups are young group, 18 years to 40, middle age group, 41 to 60, and a senior age group older than 60. Uh, the age division, so why we choose to establish um, age groups in this way. We want to take into account of the CDC definition of seniors, okay? So CDC distinguishes age groups when it comes to their uh, analysis of uh, COVID-19. CDC has done a great deal of analysis on uh, COVID-19. Uh, actually, they identified age factor and probably age factor is uh, probably still the only demographic factor that has been identified, that has been proved 
uh, science scientifically to, to, to directly related to the infection of COVID-19. CDC indicates that people 60 years or older have significantly higher risks of co contracting COVID-19 and of developing severe illness caused by COVID-19. So when we build up, develop these groups, uh, the, uh, the groups for comparison, uh, we need to take into consideration of the study contact. And we wanted to be inconsistent with, uh, with the CDC, uh, what they found. Uh, the purpose is really to see how COVID-19 affect different age groups, especially vulnerable age groups. So vulnerable age groups is uh, our focus actually here. So we want to really put that group uh, as a separate group to really look at how uh, these factors will affect the, the vulnerable group probably in different ways than other age groups, okay? So uh, in terms of, okay, it's still the same model um, was used um, and the same uh, uh, analytical method um, was used. And uh, uh, in terms of factor influence, we still got these four factors, attitude, uh, description norm, risk avoidance, and information seeking. So still these four factors turn out to be significant. But now, because we are looking at group comparison, so we start to see they actually impact on different groups in different ways, okay? So for young travelers, okay? So young travelers' intention to wear a mask uh, when flying during COVID-19 was mostly driven by their attitude, right? Their favorableness or unfavorableness toward masks, okay? Followed by uh, risk avoidance, followed by descriptive norms, and followed by information seeking. So it should be noted that information seeking, this factor, only affected young age groups, okay? Not the other two age groups, which makes sense, right? Because young people would have a wide range of uh, different information sources um, of COVID-19, so which can well contribute to their intention to wear a mask or not, okay? Uh, Middle-aged travelers' intention was affected mainly by attitude, okay? Followed by risk avoidance and uh, uh, descriptive norms. So here, information seeking is no longer a factor here in this group. Uh, but compared to young age group, uh, so I would just from here, I will talk from this small table, okay, just to make it easy. So compared to young age group, we see that attitude has a decreased magnitude of impact, okay, while risk avoidance has an increased magnitude of impact. So this may suggest that, well, attitude toward masks still has a dominant impact on the mask wearing intention. On um, middle-aged travelers intention to wear a mask, the factor of risk avoidance in this case started to carry more weight in terms of uh, their mask use decision compared to the young groups. Okay, so here we start to see age started to play a role here. So for senior travelers, still attitude, risk avoidance, and a descriptive norm. So these three are significant factors but now risk avoidance become the most important factor, okay, in the mask wearing intention of these groups. Okay, in other words, uh, this means that elderly passengers, elderly travelers will focus more on avoiding the risks associated with COVID-19 rather than their attitude toward the mask when they decide on if they want to wear a mask or not. Okay, so here we actually see some interesting patterns here. So for the three groups, young, middle age, and a senior, we see a decreasing impact of, of attitude toward the mask. Uh, at the same time, we see an increasing impact of risk avoidance. In other words, the younger the age you as an air traveler, the more likely that your intention to wear a mask is influenced by your attitude toward mask, you like it or not, okay? Uh, the older the age you as an air traveler, the more likely your intention to wear a mask is driven by you wanting to avoid the risks of COVID-19. Okay. All right. So here we have uh, uh, some more information about group comparison. Some of them are uh, interesting. For example, the top four sources of information for COVID-19 in order of frequency of use. So uh, from here, we can see for all the three groups, the top three sources for them to get COVID-19 information, they are actually very consistent. So the first, the top source to get information of COVID-19 for all the three groups is a major news media, okay? That followed by health agency, the CDC, uh, so, and followed by medical doctors, okay? However, for the young group, another important source of information is uh, social media, 
which is uh, you know which makes a good sense, right? Because they are young people. While for the other two groups, uh, another source of information that is important for them is local media, local local news media. So say so here we start to see uh, really um, when you are in different groups, age groups you really see you know different factors will influence you or you probably behave or intend to behave in different ways okay all right so moving on to our last analysis okay a willingness to pay more to switch to airlines that adopt different mass policies uh that is if giving a choice how many passengers are willing to pay more to pay extra to switch to a non-mass mandated airline or how many uh, are, are of them are willing to pay more to switch to a mass man, mass mandated airline if given a choice okay and what demographic and travel related factors can be used to predict their willingness to pay a large amount versus small amount to make the switch okay so um here we have some results showing here so half of the respondents uh, out of the 1,121 people half of them actually they indicated that that they they were really they were willing to to switch okay to switch either to wear or to not wear a mask okay so uh, some some results are here so first uh, looking at these two small uh, little graphs here so we we can see when it comes to paying extra to switch uh, we see a lot more air travelers thirty three percent or three hundred sixty one of them indicated that they were willing to pay to wear a mask okay. Uh, this is a lot more than those who indicated that they were willing to pay to not wear a mask when flying during COVID-19. So that's 14% of the total sample size or 153 of them. Okay, so this actually uh, demonstrated two quick facts here. Okay, uh, first, we can see from here, just a very simple data presentation, more American travelers considered masks important, essential, during flight in COVID-19, because we have a lot more of them willing to pay extra to wear a mask, okay? A lot more than those who want to do the other way around, okay? So more people recognize masks are important and they, they, they are willing to wear. Okay, but the second quick fact is that we still see a very opposing view, very mixed view, attitude toward masks. We still see that existing in the US because uh, we have a, a certain amount of people willing to pay for wearing masks, but a certain amount of people willing to pay to not wear masks. So we still see uh, we have very different views of mask wearing um, in the US. Okay. So regarding how much more they were willing to pay, so in both directions, okay, both directions, pay to wear or pay to not wear. So we are looking at a range of from one dollar to one thousand dollars. Okay. There are some extreme cases. Some of them indicated that they were willing to pay a lot more. Uh, one of them said he, he wanted to pay $5,000 to wear a mask. Uh, one of them said he would pay whatever it takes. So still, you know, from here, we see uh, this opposing attitude toward masks, okay? Uh, but they are small in numbers, only seven of them, okay? Uh, so uh, in this analysis, the data uh, from them, they were treated as outliers and they were removed from uh, the analysis. On average, for those who were willing to pay more to not wear a mask, the average of willingness to pay is US dollars $131. Okay. And for those who are willing to pay more to wear a mask, on average, they were willing to pay on average $97. Okay. So in a survey, we actually have two places where we ask them to put down the amounts to indicate their willingness to pay. So in one place we wanted we 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 asked them to put down a a amount in dollar value. So say you want, I'm, I'm willing to pay 200 to, to wear or not wear. So put down a dollar value. And in the other in, in the other place, um, in the questionnaire, we wanted them to put down uh, the amount in terms of the percentage of uh, uh, a round trip airline uh, ticket. Okay. So uh, two two ways to indicate the amount they were they were willing to pay. So for both groups, the amounts they were most likely to pay. Uh, with our uh, in, in dollar value, that's $50, $100, $200. Okay. And in terms of the percentage, that's 5%, 10%, and 20% of the round trip airfare. Okay. All right. So, based on the, the, the data here, uh, we performed a logistic regression to see if some demographic and travel related factors can be used to predict the willingness to pay 
a large amount versus a small amount uh, for them to switch airlines. So for this to happen, we will need to, uh, to first of all create groups, okay, uh, for, for, for both, both categories, uh, for the category of, of pay to wear a mask and the other categories of pay not to wear a mask. So for both categories, we wanted to create groups, okay, to, to indicate a large amount paying, large amount of paying, a uh, small amount. So we use uh, we use the 15% of the round trip airfare as the cutoff value to indicate large amount and small amount. So more than large amount they're willing to pay, so we would uh, pay, take that as a, you know they were willing to pay a large amount. Smaller than 15% of the round trip ticket airfare, then that's a small amount they were willing to pay. So the reason, okay, so the 15% first of all is arbitrarily arbitrary assigned. Uh, the use of that, um, there are several uh, reasons. Uh, one of them is uh, we, we consider you know, we wanted the two groups to be uh, roughly equal, so we can really uh, do a better comparison. Okay, so um, again, uh, we performed a uh, logistic regression, so the results were showing here. So for those who, uh, who were willing to pay more to wear a mask, we found out that age and the travel frequency during COVID-19, they were significant predictor of their willing to pay a large or small amount, okay? Younger age and a higher travel frequency during COVID-19 were found to be associated with a greater willingness to pay a large amount to switch to a non mask mandated airline, okay? And for those willing to pay a fee to wear a mask, okay? We found education, income level, uh, and a travel frequency. So these were significant predictor. So for example, we found higher educational level were associated with a higher willingness to pay a large amount to switch from a non-mask mandated airline to a mask mandated airline. So that brings us to our conclusions, okay? So based on the analysis uh, and discussion interpretation, so we can uh, draw some conclusions from the study, okay? So first we found that attitude is important. It is the important, it's the most important determinant uh, of the intention to wear masks. So as a matter of fact, uh, in the all sample analysis and out of the uh, two groups, out of three groups uh, in a group comparison analysis, so attitude was found to be the most important factor in the intention to wear masks when people sitting in uh, air aircraft cabin during COVID-19. So it's really about, you know, you like it or you support it or you in favor of, of mask use or not, okay? So this really shows the significance of attitude or influence okay, in the decision to wear a mask. Even we are talking about aircraft cabin environment, okay, still attitude plays a decisive role in people's decision to masking up or not. Risk avoidance is another important factor. So this is quite common sense. And third one will be uh, role model, okay? So we see people doing that, we are more likely to do the same thing. Uh, and it also, we also find information seeking. This is an important factor in mask wearing as well. Okay. Uh, we also find that different age groups um, were driven by different important factors when it comes to the intention to wear masks during flight. So young travelers mainly relied on their attitude toward masks uh, in order for them to decide if, if they intend to wear or not wear. But senior passengers, they paid the most attention um, avoiding the risks of COVID-19 when they decide on wear or not wear a mask, okay? And we also found that more airline passengers accept masks. They were willing to wear a mask and they were even willing to pay more to wear a mask when flying during COVID-19. And this is more than those who are who are not uh, not uh, who are not willing to wear masks who who probably hesitate in accepting masks. Okay, uh, but we we kind of see uh, the opposing view, the mixed view of masks still very much exist in the U.S. So if given a choice, younger and frequent flyers during COVID nineteen, uh, they are more willing to pay a large amount to change from a non mask mandated airline to a mask mandated airline. Okay, and the willingness to pay a large amount to change from a uh, non mass mandated airline to mass mandated airline were associated or affected by travelers' education, income, and again, travel frequency during COVID 19. Okay, all right, so now, uh, yeah, contributions, implications, and limitations. So, this study made a theoretical co contribution. Uh, so, uh, the you know, 
as far as we know, to the best of not our knowledge, uh, this study is the first one to look at passengers' uh, intention and willingness to wear a mask in the aircraft cabin environment. Um, so this is a, as far as we see it, is an important study field. Uh, but surprisingly, no study has been done uh, so far. So uh, we consider the findings of this study will fill an important research gap. Okay, practical significance and contribution, there are a lot of them. Uh, so findings in this study can be useful in real world, okay, for airlines, for passenger, for uh, policymakers to really better understand their passengers and take proper measures to ensure in-flight safety, especially when the, the industry is recovering from COVID-19, okay? Uh, so for, for example, knowing, uh, you know, role model effect, right? Find the, 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 uh, one of the find, find findings uh, from this study is role model effect. So this really shows that policymakers, airlines, uh, uh, government, so they can really make you make use of that, right? To modeling uh, the mask rate of wearing behavior intention. So uh, for example, using celebrities, important public figures, so let them uh, wear a mask to model uh, the behavior. So more people uh, are more likely to follow, okay? And also uh, another example would be knowing, knowing the, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the senior tra tra travelers intention. So the findings show that senior uh, passengers are more likely uh, to be driven by uh, their, their wanting of avoiding the risks of social uh, COVID-19 when they decide on if they want to wear a mask or not in the uh, aircraft cabin. So knowing this is really can, can, can be uh, helpful, can help airlines and the policymakers to come up with measures to accommodate the needs of these vulnerable uh, population groups. So limitations, um, as with all studies, this study has uh, some limitations. So uh, first of all, it took on a cross-sectional design to collect self-reported data online about mass use uh, from MTurk. So um, the findings in this case may not be 100% representative of the national population in the US. It can be better generalized to online communities in the US or in other countries where uh, we share some similarities in mask policies and mask practice, like the UK, like Canada. Another limitation would be uh, several factors in the model turn out to be not significant. So they may merit further examination. So especially we have two cultural factors turn out not to be significant. So uh, future research can uh, take a look at uh, uh, these factors uh, you know, from uh, using a, a different set of data, okay, from other perspectives, okay. Also with limitations, we say the findings of, the, of this study provide a useful starting point for engaging conversation about mass use uh, in the air transportation contact during a global pandemic, okay. So the findings can, can really increase the preparedness of airlines, of policymakers, to tackle any challenges that lies ahead. Okay, so this concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you, Dr. Pan. That was very interesting, very uh, enlightening for me because I have a, a daughter who's in that young age group, and of course, I'm in the middle age group. And I <laughs> noticed that our attitudes about certain elements of this pandemic differ in. It, it throws me off because I'm like, I raised you. I, I would think you would have similar attitudes as mine, but uh, they're not necessarily the case. Um, but yes, let's open it up. Are there any questions from anyone in the audience? Feel free just to engage your microphone and, and speak forth. I got a couple of questions. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, I may have missed this because I had to run out to the bathroom. But um, I do have a couple uh, questions and then a statement. In the um, the questionnaire, um, what what was the scale? What was the rating scale? And did you offer uh, open ended responses? And um, and then I have a comment after that. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, uh, you know, I uh, uh, briefly covered that in my introduction. So uh, the questionnaire when it comes to measuring the factors in the model. So I we used a, a Likert scale, five point Likert scale to make the measurement. Okay, hmm. all right. And then did you, um, did you have open-ended questions, comments? 
No, we do not have open-ended questions because uh, we mainly wanted to do is in a cognitive way. So open-ended questions uh, for us is uh, uh, is uh, uh, we will need to to, to re really code that in a way that we can make use of that. So of course, I understand that we can add an open-ended question or two. Right. Uh, we can, you know, get their uh, opinion. We can better understand, right? So ba based on we have quality data, quantity data, we can, you know, make use of both. But in terms of this study, because we have a quite extensive uh, questionnaire, it's uh, uh, 65 uh, measurement for those nine factors. So we do not really include a open-ended question. Yeah. Also, another just... reason is, another reason is, when it, it include an open-ended question, that takes time for people to I, complete. I understand. I was just wondering. I was just wondering. But you know, no, I did okay. I did a mass study survey, and I just presented it this week in Baltimore at the Human Factors Conference. But we sent it out to aviation um, collegiate communities. And um, which was interesting is, of course, what I call polarized. You know, we got a lot of, you know, uh, polarized responses. Okay, but however, I think if I was interpreting some of what you're saying, it seemed like, um, especially those that would wear a mask, it seemed like you had about 85% of people that were willing or their attitudes about face masks um, were, were somewhat, and I'm gonna say use the word positive or willingness, compliance. I think that's what I was interpreting. I got a little bit, um, more discrepancy. I got. A, I found about seventy-five percent were, you know, very much in favor of face masks, and twenty-five percent were really against it. Um, but in a lot of ways, it seemed like, of course, you did a different type of analysis, but it, it sort of, um, you know, corroborate a lot of the stuff that you were saying. Yeah. I do, do want to make um, a comment. Um, I think you did have a typo. I think it was on your first slide. Oh. Um, it was 35 million deaths globally. I think that's more 3.5 million. Okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, I, I do want to comment on your your uh, uh, what you just said. Uh, you know, I think it's a uh, um, not really surprising that we find uh, we we found in the same about the same per percentage of people in the U.S. that are in favor of masks versus a uh, percent of people that are having you know different views about that. Because the literature, when I uh, when we did this uh, the, the, the study, we went through the literature, and the literature was very clear about that. So a couple of studies pointed out that 80 percent, 80 to 85 percent of people in the U.S. they are support in support of mask wearing, and they 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 are willing to wear a mask. But 15 percent, 10 to 15 percent, 15 to 20 percent, they are very very vo vocal in terms of uh, wear uh, wear a mask. They they are they do not like to wear a mask. They're against that. So I think um, you the findings you just said, OK, you have 70% uh, of them in support of a mask. So which is really about the same same range of what I'm looking at. So I think it's really not surprising because uh, the literature, previous studies, uh, they consistently pointed to uh, the similar. Yeah, well, I think one, I, you know, you broke yours up, but I think my mean so we had about half the sample size as you did, but my mean age, I would guess, was a little bit younger than yours. Um, um, but um, it was obviously more relevant with the younger folks. You're finding where the younger folks are more willing to not want to deal with and willing to pay more on an airline. You know, so that sort of um, dovetails into that. But I, um, but my, that might be why there's just a little bit percent difference there because it. I think overall, younger people are less willing to comply with the face mask. And my, um, you know, I think uh, students represented 70% of my sample. And of those students, of those 70%, their mean age is like 22, you know. Okay, so you and used I, the student sample in, in your- in It was your students, study? faculty. It was sent out to students, faculty, and- um, Okay. Students, faculty, and staff. And I think 70% of the respondents were students and I know their mean age was 22. I don't recall, I, I'm not sure if the mean age overall was maybe 26 or 27 years old. I think that's correct. You know, yeah. So that, that would be. Yeah, that so I, I think, okay. So in this case, because I used the, um, I'm Turk for uh, data collection. 
Uh, the overall age is still like toward more younger part of the population right. because we're talking about online too, right? People have to learn to use online too. So young people in this case, they have more advantage doing that. So uh, that could, well, I, I put that in my limitation um, in my paper actually, because uh, you know, that could, you know, you can say bias the results. So when I interpret the results, I, I also keep that in consideration as well. So because, uh, you know, it's, we cannot really say uh, it's a truly representative sample. Right. Yeah, and also, well, yeah, yeah, and also what, what, what you just said uh, that uh, made, made me thinking about, you know, when I actually did the study, uh, I did two rounds of a pilot study, okay? And for both pilot studies, I had a text box for them, for participants, to give me any comments, anything they, they want to say. So this is probably what you said, open-ended, but it's really not a question. It's just anything that they want to say to me. So reading their words, their remarks was really, really interesting. And you know, just see those uh, very opposing view, mixed view of math. But many of them say uh, they like the research, they like, they like the survey because they think this is the issue that we need to look at. So. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I got, you know, it's interesting because I, we, I sent mine out in Thanksgiving of last year and I sent it out, I think I had 17 questions and after the questions I say, you know, just feel free, feel free to add any comments. And what I got is, you know, I got extreme, you know, extreme um, comments, you know, however, but what's really interesting and those that were totally for mask mandates or totally against it, both of those people, a lot of them said, I really appreciate you doing this. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to, to say how I feel. I was like shocked by that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so, you know, obviously this is very passionate and people, you know, want to want to express their opinions. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I told you, I gave a talk um, Tuesday in Baltimore. One of my students gave a talk yesterday at the UIA conference in Memphis. And, um, you know, of course, we got a lot of interest from the audience. I mean, she she said people are just, you know, bombarding her with questions and comments and things like that, you know. So it is, you know, people are, no matter what side you're on, they're, they're appreciative of us trying to do this research, it seems like. And they like the, the fact that they're able to express themselves. Okay, thank you. I think you are mute, muted, uh, Dr. McMurray. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just talking away. I, very good feedback is what I was saying before. Um, and I wanted to see if there were any additional questions from the audience. I did want to know uh, what were the numbers of people, or I guess more, how did you get the feedback in terms of the willingness to pay more? Was it only a certain segment of your population that actually completed that portion and that was based upon a question as to which direction they leaned or how, how was that part of the questionnaire conducted? Oh, the questionnaire, uh, that, that's the last part of the questionnaire uh, in which uh, people, uh, participants are giving a choice. They, 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 they read that, the, okay, so the scenario given to them is, uh, is, uh, is about Let's say uh, you are making a, a, a air, air trip in the next three months, and the mass uh, is not mandatory by the airline, but you are giving a choice to pay an extra fee to move on to uh, wear a mask or not wear a mask to, to, to switch to another airline. So just suppose there is another airline uh, or direct flights, right, or domestic flights. So same, same thing, but it's just, a, you know, uh, they, they, they allow you to wear a mask or they allow you to not wear a mask. So, uh, indicate your willingness to pay extra to switch. So this is the scenario given to them. Uh, so I was actually surprised that we get uh, that that we get uh, quite a number of people saying they are indicating they are willing to do that to pay to wear or not to wear. So that's half of the um, total sample size, about six hundred people uh, indicating that they were willing to do that. So from from there, we wanted to you know using. The, the the people that we have we, we have indicating that they are they, they have this willingness to pay either way so we wanted to know what factors demographic factors 
what mo motivated them to pay a large amount versus more amount to make the switch. So this is how it's structured. Okay, because I was just curious whether or not um, everybody received those two scenarios. Or yeah, everybody, okay. but not but not everybody indicated that they were willing to switch. Some of them just leave it open. They 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 are not you know they are not pay paying you know they just uh, you know but half of them indicated that they do want to do that. Okay, because I guess I was just envisioning that perhaps it was there was a leading question that asked them what is their preference, and then based upon their preference, asking oh, okay. whether or uh, not they'd be willing to pay the switch. Okay. So there was no way that you could distinguish uh, based on your responses whether they were uh, non mask wearing in versus the mask wearing end of the spectrum in terms of their preference. Yeah. So okay. there are actually two small sections in uh, in this scenario. One is a uh, uh, if uh, you are giving a choice, um, you know, are, are you willing to pay extra to switch to a non mask mandated airline? If so, how much more you want to pay? And the same is repeated for the other, uh, the other scenario. Okay, okay. Any other questions from the audience? All right. Well, this was really interesting because I it, this is something that's dear to my heart because I am a firm mask wearer when I'm out in public, except for, you know, if I'm just out in a park or something like that, but I keep my distance. And so it, it really does kind of uh, jar me a little bit when somebody's not wearing their mask and they get close to me. So it, it, this is definitely, I can see where people would want to be able to voice their opinion. I'm just curious whether it was the dissenters that voiced more than the... <laughs> than the ones who are more willing to wear their masks uh, yeah. in the situation. Right, so the thing is that when we are talking about flying in the future, so many of us, maybe we will be out of COVID soon, but I would say the psychological impact will last for a long time. I so this it. will really impact on our intention to wear a mask or not, if, especially when we're, we're sitting in a packed environment like air, aircraft cabin. So I think this is the, the point that we really want to know. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for this valuable research. We appreciate thank you. it. Okay. Thank you everyone um, for participating in our uh, webinar. Just to let you know that our next webinar will come up on December 3rd at 1 p.m. Dr. Vintesh Pandey of North Carolina a and will be discussing modeling approaches for equitable dynamic congestion pricing. So we will send out the link to that webinar a little bit closer to the date, so probably around mid-November or early mid-November um, as reminders for that particular webinar, but it'll be using the same interface and the same method of communication. Thank you again, and we wish you all a good evening.